Welcome to our podcast, It's About Payroll. We're your hosts, Brian Escobar and Walter William Duncan III. Whether you're new to the payroll game or a seasoned veteran, we have something for you. Welcome back, folks. As promised, we have a guest for you today, the man, the myth, the legend, Gerard M. Hall, CPP, is came, has come back to talk with us. We love you, man. We missed you. And let us know how you've been. Let us know what's going on. I appreciate that. That's way too much of a uh, an introduction. <laughs> no, it isn't. Just a isn't. lowly old person. It as is it? No. Things are good. It's starting to get to our crazy time of the year. Yep. So I'm already starting to feel it. <laughs> wow. And you brought up a good question. I thought about you last year. And I told Walter about this. I said, I was like, wow, I wonder what he does that bogs him down year end. Because we all have our variations of busy and it may mm-hmm. not be the same. And depending on the service you use and that. So there's all kind of variations. Can right. you share real quick, it's a sidetrack, but what is it that really bogs you down come year end? The fact that we are responsible for trying our best to make sure the data that our clients are putting in is good data ah. so that we're not caught Woo. at the end where they're That's like, epic. oh, what happened? You didn't catch yeah. this. And it's just, That's epic. so we spend a lot of time Say doing less. a bunch of audits yep. <laughs> Say yeah. less. to make sure they're it. good. Okay. Okay. I get it. All right. That makes sense. That makes sense. Cool. So other than that, just busy, any good concerts? I know one of the times we connected, you had a good concert. I was at a good concert. No, it's football season. So I've been watching the gridiron. Oh, who's your team? Virginia Tech, of course, is my team. I'm a college football guy. Not- my wife is a diehard Cowboys fan, so I just support her team. Ooh, I'm going to have to edit Which is that actually, out. They're actually doing pretty good this year. Don't edit that part. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> they are. Cooper, Cooper Rush is doing his thing. Oh, man. Now I'm a New York Giants fan, so we Ooh. are arch rivals, the Cowboys. Yeah. But my brother is a diehard Cowboy fan. So I get it, having to live with that close in. I get who, it. Who won the Cowboys Giants game again? Uh, I, blur, I blur, I, <laughs> oh, oh, do we want to edit that part out? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, that's good. That's good. Oh man. Okay. Cool. That's <laughs> awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. So you so cool on the sports. You all caught up. Are you spending your Saturdays watching college football? Trying yep, to anyway. Sat- Yep, Saturday's college, Sunday's NFL. So nice, um, yeah. And I got a nice little cave with five TVs, so I get to watch all the games that I want. So that's, that's how a, I enjoy a my week. Overboard, holy <laughs> crap! Hey, 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 hey. No, I'm, I'm hating on you. I'm hating. <laughs> I wanted hate. to. I wanted to. I'm <laughs> jealous. I'm jealous. That's awesome. That okay? Cool. That's great, man. That's cool. We gotta balance it out. We gotta balance Absolutely. it out. Yeah. So let's get right to it. This is a subject that really Gerard really sparked in us a curiosity. We we were like, what? An angle of the whole payroll industry that we really hadn't focused on. And it's been still a challenge for me to really support. And it's the consumer end. Gerard, we we did a summary episode last week and it was just saying, okay, here's what we're going to talk about. This week, we wanted to jump right into the earnings piece of it. And okay. really get your perspective on one in general, what should folks know about their pay stub, their pay receipt, their statement mm-hmm. when they get paid? Right. And two, what should folks really zero in on when it comes to earning? Yeah. So the biggest thing right now is, uh, unfortunately, I don't want to say unfortunately, but with the consumer level, most people know, okay, if I'm told I'm paid $20 an hour, I just take the hours I work and multiply it by 20. And then most everybody knows about overtime um, where, hey, if I work over 40 hours this week, I get time and a half. And then of course your salary, your salary, you just take your salary and divide it by the number of pays. The problem is that there's a lot of things that come into play that may change your base rate. And so you've probably heard from, of course, we know what the term regular rate of pay. Everybody's like, what's regular rate of pay? That's my base pay. I'm like, most times it might be, but the regular rate of pay is truly taken into consideration and not realizing that there's some additional pay that might get added into your paycheck that changes that base rate, changes that calculation for overtime. So you wouldn't just get paid $30 an hour if you're a $20 an hour employee, if you've got additional earnings that are, quote, unquote, included in the regular rate of pay. That's a great call out. That's a great call out. Can you give us an example of what that might look like? 
Yeah, something. absolutely. Okay. My wife it works at a hospital. She's a nurse. And okay, so mine too. she works nights. And so yep. she gets a shift diff or yep. a shift differential. Yep. And so for that, she I think it's an extra dollar fifty an hour, but it's not on all of her hours because yep. the shift differential doesn't start until eleven PM, mm -hmm. ends at seven. Speak. And my wife works six forty five PM to seven yep. fifteen. Yep. So not all of her hours are part of that shift diff. However, yep. if she works more than forty hours in that week, which she can't just take her base rate and say, okay, we're going to pay the four hours of overtime you worked at your base rate. It's because that shift diff. So you've got to calculate how many hours were included to the shift diff, how many mm -hmm. hours were just base rate, and then mm -hmm. combine it and come up with a number that says, okay, based off of the number of hours you worked and the pay you made, you have to divide that to get the regular rate of pay. And then from that, half of that would be your overtime premium. So that's just an example of where it's not clean, cut and dry of, oh, just time and a half, because there's that shift that, that is intertwined in all of that great calculation. I'm so glad this is recorded because I, I lost them halfway through and I was like, what? And, but correct me if I'm wrong. That's like you just explained the weighted average, right? Doing correct. The weighted average. Yeah, calculation. exactly. And yeah. And basically, as Gerard said, to summarize, when you kind of have two different things going two different rates going on when your ot kicks in you got to blend those rates to come up with that ot premium rate yeah wow yeah. that's a, an amazing call out because again see as we struggle here i didn't even think of that in earnings and that's why i was so happy to have gerard on the call today and we're gonna ha try to have him on a couple more times before this season's over because there's a lot to dig into and break apart another aspect of this is the difference between, and I don't know how we can summarize it, but the difference between exempt and non-exempt is always yes. a great call out. And how do you define that for us as far as how we can t take away a nugget from exempt and non-exempt and how people know that where they land? Yeah, I wish it was a simple nugget like that because there's a lot of different factors that could play into that. But from the when they say exempt, they really mean like exempt from OT and non-exempt is I am eligible for OT basically more so salary people are usually exempt mm -hmm. from OT and, usually. Hour and hourly people are non-exempt. So meaning they, they're entitled to OT if they're eligible for that. So that's pretty much my thought process on it. What about you two? Yeah, that's pretty straightforward. And the thing that I'm glad you said usually. Yes, yes, right. yes. Because, I was, uh, yep, that's, that's where I was going with it. That's where people start getting into a situation like, oh, I'm salaried, so I'm an exempt. I'm like, not necessarily because mm, exempt necessarily. is based off of your duties. And so yep. you can pay somebody a salary, but if their duties don't line up to the federal laws or your state laws, if they're stricter, mm -hmm. you can't make them exempt just because right. they make a certain, because it, with, when it comes to exemptions, there's two different facets that go in. It's based off of the duties and then it's based off of how much they make. Mm -hmm. For example, I always get the, always use the example of my class when it comes to a shift lead at like McDonald's. Yeah, they manage people. They follow the duties of being an exempt person, but are they making for the federal side? Are they making that $684 a week? Because if they're not, if they're making less than that, then it doesn't matter if they have the duties to be an exempt. They can't be exempt, which means yep. if they work over 40 hours, they get overtime. That's right. That's right. And, you know, to add to that complexity of that, there are folks who do meet all the requirements and... Mm -hmm. If you so choose as an employer to pay them the overtime, you can. You sure can. You sure you can. can. You can. And that's what kills me about it is like you can always give the employee more, but never less. Of course, to be fair, never less. But that and that's what made it so difficult. It was like always a maybe. And you go to these payroll law webinars and classes and the, law, the lawyers are always like, eh, it's maybe. It's always right. a maybe to a lot of these questions. And that's the complexity of the OT piece of it. But the baseline is, yes, if you're getting OT on a regular basis, you're probably an hourly employee. And if you're not getting overtime, you're probably a salaried employee. Yeah. Usually, yes, <laughs> usually. Keyword. That was the key word. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And a few other call outs on the pay stub are your pay period. You want to make sure that your the pay is aligning with the hours that you did work those days and what actually happened on those days understanding your pay period is big too because a lot of times we have what 
with our customers will get questioned on their pay and they think they're in a different pay period than they're getting paid for. Sometimes there's an error in the data and they actually see a different pay period than we're paying them for. But we have to fix it. It, it might just be a clerical mistake, but the money's based on one thing and there's a, ref, a display error on their pay period. So if folks are paying attention, that's a great call out. But these are things that you should be looking at when you get paid. And of course, your check date. I came across this things when I was doing research, of course, and preparing for today, right? And an, uh, an employment attorney, I'm not going to name his name. It's not that serious. But he's on a website out there. And he's, oh, if your gross pay is wrong, everything is wrong. And as a payroll professional, I'm offended. That's not right. true. That you know what I mean? True. That's just not true. Be and you know why? Because it discounts the fact that everything could be wrong. Right. There are multiple layers to what could be wrong. And if it's just like one piece of it, it doesn't mean everything's wrong. It means, hey, mm -hmm. you're one little piece. So that I was like, dude, no, you give a bad name to this. You're like that worst employee there that like gets everybody in a riot because their check was wrong. And every, he's like, oh, my, every, everything is wrong. So I thought that was a big statement. But you should, all that to say, you should look at your gross. You should look at your net. You should look at your calculations. He went on to say that he, claim, he claims that he calculates his check and keeps it in a spreadsheet and verifies it. I don't know how true that is. That's, mm -hmm. hey, if you do, if you can, great. You should definitely spot check it every now and Absolutely. then like that to obsess. I don't know. There's you can there's other tools you can use to to keep your your folks honest and pressure check your tests, pressure test your check. Yeah. What do you, what are your thoughts on that guys? You're absolutely right. And the thing about it is it's nothing worse than you'd never want to ruffle the feathers of a payroll professional. And it's not just because the three of us yeah. are payroll professionals, right? right? It's just like, we, we, you want to keep getting paid, right? So let's not make <laughs> our lives difficult. We are human and we yeah. can yep. get things incorrect. And there is a tactful way to say, Hey, yeah. from what I've calculated, doesn't look like what's matching up rightfully. But if you're going to create animosity, I got some words yeah. for you that we probably shouldn't <laughs> put on this podcast that might have to be edited oh, out. Gotcha. You know, you want to make sure that you continue to get paid. Like we're the reason why you come to work. Exactly. Not to say that treat us with, you got to treat us right. You do have to treat us right because you should treat everybody right. But exactly. You know, to your point, it's just like always you can question things tactfully. And that's always been my thing. We're not saying that we're the end all be all. Systems do mess up. People are human because yep. trash in, trash out. That's what yep. I always say when it comes to data. Yep. Um, and the best way is, hey, just bring up their arise your issue. Let's talk through it. If you are right, of course, we will correct it. If you're not right, we will educate you on why you think you're right and why you aren't. <laughs> yeah. Politely, as I tell my team, politely let them know yeah. as we educate. We got to become, we wear many hats in payroll. And mm -hmm. one of the ones that I'm embracing lately is educator and trying to build. And ironically, we work for an education company and or, or appropriately. And so it's fun to try to put those systems together. We have to politely let everybody know what's going on. One of the things that I found in the research too, or I continue to be amazed about is the state by state variations in pay stub law. Like uh -huh. some pay stub, some states, you don't even have to produce a pay stub for folks. Right. And other states, they, California, I think is really, it's the one of the states that we're in that I'm aware of. Maybe there's another state that's just as progressive, but I'm not in it. But California really sets a really great standard and it really makes the, it forces the employer to make the pay stub a real, an, a, a, a living statement of your earnings and everything that's going on in your pay. Right. And as it should be, yes. as it should be. Minnesota's right? like that as well. Are um, they? Okay. Yeah. And so there's a lot that you have to have on the stub. I know one that sticks out that tends to be an issue depending on what platform you are is both of those states that you just mentioned, not only do you have to show the available balance of any accrued PTO, um, yes. but you have to also show the amount that was used throughout the year. Yes. And it's not as easy as just saying, hey, put in some verbiage down in the stub that says, hey, mm -hmm. click here mm -hmm. to view your stub in HRS. Nope. Like they have explicit laws that state you have to show how much they have used in addition to how much is available to them for the year. Yep. 
Yeah. Yeah, that, and that's exactly what I was just that made me think about it is the PT. We were just talking. I don't remember. I think it was me and Walt. We were just like, hey, this has to display. And I, and I told a colleague, like, yep, no problem. I'm on it. We'll, we'll make sure it displays. Yeah. It, so let me ask you a question. Of course. Thank uh, you. When it comes to the education piece, do you feel that it's solely on the payroll professional to educate the consumer on their stuff? At being that we are the payroll professionals, or should the company like help with some of that? What do you feel? I think the company should be in support of what we need to do. I think my personal opinion is because we're the ones that are going to get chewed out if it's wrong. I feel like the onus does fall on the payroll professional, but the payroll professional is responsible for making sure the executive team and the leaders, the share, the shareholders of the company, not only are aware of the education that needs to take place, but are supportive with financial resources, training resources, what yep. have you. I know the answer to your question without answering your question, but I think it's a shared responsibility, but I think the payroll professional should definitely be driving it. No, but, yeah, you answered it, Gerard, and perfectly yeah. said, that. yep, I think it's on us. Not unfortunately, but because we're the subject matter experts, it's mm-hmm. on us, and it only helps our process if we can control some of that education. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And the employee has their part in it, right? Because they have to be willing and receptive to oh, receive gosh, that, yes. that knowledge. Like that, that, well, that's that quote the tough I, part, though. That quote I have on here by Anton Chekhov is, knowledge is of no value unless you put it into practice. So that's basically good. saying, you like if you don't use what you learned, it's not going to be beneficial for you. Agreed. I, yeah. I, yes, agreed. I think the challenge with a lot of companies now is getting the employees to learn. Yeah. How do you get them to do it? And then even in the space of where several of us are still geo dispersed and working yeah. remote, that makes it a little tougher because at least when I'm in a class looking at your face, I can tell, okay, they're engaged, whatever. But if they're at home, are they just clicking next, next, next? Okay. I agree. I watched it and then really gained nothing from it. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I hear heavy sighs over there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't that, think that's of that. I didn't have... a, a triggering moment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is that, absolutely. We've been on those trainings, Brian, where some of the managers are not even paying attention during the training that we're giving or anything like that. So I, I get that frustration. I, there's got to be a solution. Okay. So what if it's finance? If you If there's an incentive behind it, couldn't you make it a little tougher? To take the online test, yeah, it, it may be a little. Yeah, you may have to. Yeah, yeah wow, and that's what the challenge. Do, it oh, is a challenge. Please so, tell we, us. so what we do is twofold for on-demand trainings. Number one, we have it locked down to where the you can't advance the slide until the slide until the narration is done. So it's not okay. just a mm. here. It's this, the narration's thirty seconds. So we will unlock the next button on this slide after 31 seconds. Got it. So even if you don't think you want to pay attention, you can't advance until the narration is done. The second thing that we do is in addition to a quick assessment at the end, which of course allows us to see how many times, because we'll set up our mini quizzes to say, okay, you have to get at least an 80% in order to pass. And usually it's only five to six questions. And so that lets us know, number one, okay, were they paying attention? And then let's say they get three out of the six, that's 50%. So it makes them take it again. Well, our LMS learning management system does track how many times it took for them to get 80%. Ah. It it will allow us to say, okay, yeah, they did get a hundred percent, but after 17 times. (laughs) And if it took them 17 times to answer six questions correctly, then it sounds like we need some additional reinforcement there. Yes. Yes. Wow. Okay. I like that. That's really good. That's really yeah. good. So, Gerard, anything else that we should take away from the consumer piece on the earnings part for someone who's looking at their pay stub? Am I good? Yeah, I think you're good. Like I said, you. I think we've covered it all. We talked about the rate of pays and how the base, you know, the base pay may not necessarily be what you use at time and a half or overtime because right. of the different things. We talked about exempt and non-exempt, which now that people know that it's not necessarily just because you're salaried means you're exempt because there, and there's companies that need to know that as well. Cause they think, okay, if I pay a salary, then it doesn't matter. So if mm-hmm. you need to pay a salary 
and they work 34 hours that week and you agree to pay on a 40 hour week. Yeah, of course you pay 40 hours, but if they work 49 hours, you can't just say, oh, they're salary unless they are truly exempt. And then to your point, and I know this is a little outside of payroll as far as making sure your pay period and check data, that's huge, especially when it comes to income verification, because you could potentially mess up somebody trying to get a house or trying to get a line of credit because they'll look and say, okay, wait a minute, how come you have three days overlapping on two different paychecks? And then they'll question that and possibly kick it out. Oh. You definitely want to make sure that's right. Everything is reported correctly. And I know we mostly talk and we educate on a federal level, but just remember that there are states and localities that have a lot stricter guidelines. One example I'll give when it comes to non-exempt and non-exempt, we had a client who they had account managers and they were responsible for their set of clients. Federally, they were exempt because of the administrative exemption. However, the state of California did not see it that way. And so mm -hmm. they were actually out of compliance because they were paying these account managers exempt salary. But California said, no, mm -hmm. you, they don't have enough duties to trigger that administrative exemption from the California perspective. So they ended up having mm. to recalculate and figure out overtime. Luckily, this company was tracking their time. Otherwise, it would have been a even crazier. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's a big call out. Yeah, as you were talking, I was thinking about the folks who have to be careful with tracking your salaried employees' time because right. if they work too many hours and now that rate, of pay they thought they were getting doesn't look so good spread over so many hours and exactly. you know, folks are going to feel like there's an equity, equity problem and then money problem at the end of the day yep. and want more money. There are companies I've always consulted, as, hey, be careful with that because it can work both ways. Very interesting call out. Man, Gerard, like yeah. always, man, you are the man with the master plan. We really Ooh. appreciate you coming through and being a part of the show again. I'm going to try to get you on in a couple of weeks again. We're going to still be talking about pay stuff. And we'll <laughs> probably be somewhere in taxes or something yeah. and, hey. and breaking it down for the folks, man. And we again, we thank you, man. You again birthed this whole concept for us and, and inspired us to try to help yes. folks. and. Yeah expand our knowledge and at the same time hopefully give somebody a nugget to work with out there yeah most definitely because you know as we know people who have been working 40 and 50 years and they know taxes come out they know deductions happen but they truly have no idea it's like all right this is what they told me i made and just go with it but yep. i'm always a person that i'm the fact checker not just in payroll but everything in my life it's i know that's what you told me or i know yes. that's what google may have said but I, yes. I need to know this for myself. <laughs> yes, I think that's a common thread amongst payroll folks. We love to fact check. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, man. Thanks, guys. Thanks for coming out tonight and making this show happen. We hope we gave you something to walk away with and you learned some, a little bit of something today. Thank you, Gerard. Thank, Thank you, Walt. My pleasure. Have a great night, folks. Take care. See hey, you, everybody. Thank you for listening to today's episode of our podcast. We appreciate you. We're grateful for you. And we hope that the information that we'll share with you will impact you as a payroll professional. Until next time, keep learning, keep growing, and most importantly, keep going.